Hey ladies and gentlemen, Stephen here from Red Essence. Welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. And I am really excited about today's fragrance review because I'm so happy to finally own the brand new offering from the company Amouage. And this one is called Interlude Black Iris Man. So make sure to stay tuned. So again, this fragrance was released in 2020. I think this is the first time that Amouage has ever released a flanker to one of their more popular fragrances. And I think the original Interlude Man came out back in like 2012 or something like that. And I purchased that with my own money. I remember going to Min New York in Manhattan at 117 Crosby Street. And I walked in, Chad, uh, the proprietor of the store was standing behind the counter. And I said, I'm interested in a 100 ml of Interlude Man. And he was like, oh, okay. And and uh, I enjoyed it ever since. I know it has achieved the reputation of being the blue beast in Fragcom. A lot of people know that it's very bold and brash and brazen sometimes. It has the frankincense, the myrrh, the incense qualities, the cedar, the sandalwood, that agarwood smoke that also starts to come through. And then of course you also have the rosemary, the aromatic properties, and also the oregano note that a lot of people talk about that kind of gives it that really loud, smoky character and it's described by the brand as organized chaos, which is a really cool concept. And obviously I think a lot of us know what an interlude is, especially when it pertains to music. So why Black Iris? So a couple of things have happened here. So I know the first of which is that Christopher Chong, the creative director of Amouage is no longer the creative director of Amouage. So I think maybe perhaps what we're seeing is some changes are being made to the brand internally. Uh, this product is from Amon. I did purchase it with my own money. I actually made a reminder on my phone that when this fragrance comes out at 12 o'clock Eastern time here in the United States, I wanted to make the purchase. So it was about $260 for a 100 ml bottle. And the really cool thing is that I guess the company was experiencing some delays on account of COVID-19. And so one, they refunded the shipping charges, which was absolutely amazing. I got an email a few days after my purchase saying as a way of them apologizing and also saying, we appreciate you as a customer. I think this is incredible customer service. They refunded the shipping charges. And not only that, but when I opened the box, I noticed that there was another box from Amouage in there. And then this one actually contains a candle, a bath gel for Figment Man, and also a miniature of Silver Man which I think is absolutely amazing. So not only do, did they include this, refund the shipping charges, but they also added a personalized note saying, we do apologize for what happened and please accept this as a token of our appreciation and our way of saying sorry, which, and funny enough, it actually got here quite quickly from Oman. It went from Oman to Dubai, to I think New York or something like that, and then to me, and I live in New Jersey. So it actually got here pretty quickly. I think it took about a week and a half. So I've been spending some time with this one, and as I said to you before, interlude Black Iris. Why Black Iris? So this fragrance was actually inspired by a painting that was done in 1926 by painter Georgia O'Keeffe, who unfortunately passed away in 1986, two years before I was born. And she is known and widely regarded as the mother of American modernism. And she painted a painting called Black Iris, which is also known as Black Iris III, Roman numeral three. And she specializes in paintings of enlarged flowers, skyscrapers, uh, New York skyscrapers, but also uh, New Mexico landscapes. And I believe she passed away in Santa Fe, as a matter of fact, but she was born in Wisconsin. Don't quote me on that. And this is a really cool painting. If you look at it up close, it has a lighter aspect towards the top, a darker aspect towards the bottom. And there was actually an art historian who looked at it and she interpreted it as a morphological metaphor for the female genitalia. And in a 1939 text, this American, uh, this painting or pardon me, Georgia O'Keeffe uh, pretty much rejected that interpretation and said, no, that's not what it's supposed to be, but I'm very happy that you took the time to really think about it and to really analyze it and to also spend time admiring something that we pass so often and so regularly on a daily basis. Because if you think about it, at every turn we make when we go on a walk, when we walk our dogs, when we go for a light jog in the morning, we're always passing 
flowers on the street, but we never really take the time to really appreciate all the little details and all the things that make up the beauty of the nature. And so this is sort of inspired by that black iris painting, but it wanted to take this lighter detail. So they toned down the oregano and the rosemary, but they also amplified the violet and they added this note of iris to the composition to make it a smoother version of the original interlude man. Enough talking, let's go ahead and take a look at the presentation. So the box for this fragrance is gorgeous and obviously it looks very similar to other releases from the brand as opposed to the fact that the original has a much more colorful palette whereas this one is a bit more monochromatic with its use of the hue of blue. And the bottom has all of your information on it. This is concentrated at 25% oil and it is made in Oman. And the top of the box comes off to reveal a podium in which the bottle rests very comfortably. And the bottle for the fragrance looks very similar to the original. I actually believe it's the same exact color. Uh, the only difference being that it says black iris towards the bottom and the bottle has the typical amour shape for their men's fragrances, which is shaped like a kanjar, which is a weapon. The cap also has a blue Swarovski crystal embedded into it and the color is sapphire blue. And the amouage crest may also be located on the top of the cap. Now the cap does not click into place, but it is magnetic. So you can actually pick it up from the cap, just be cautious because amouage bottles are pretty heavy. And the distribution on the atomizer is a little bit narrow, but it gets the job done. Let's continue with the smell. So when I initially sprayed this fragrance for the first time several days ago when I first got it in the mail, I remember really appreciating and admiring that it did remind me of the original Interlude Man. And that happens to be one of my favorite fragrances of all time. I am a collector of Amouage fragrances. I own about 10 of them and nine of them were purchased with my own money. I think only one was sent to me by a company and that was Fate Man. I believe Max Aroma sent that to me. But I'm a huge fan of the company of Amouage. And this fragrance in particular, I love the fact that they stayed true to the original by releasing something that did immediately remind me of the original. So I suppose the question is, if I have the original, do I necessarily need to look into this version? And I think that that is a very fair question, especially when it comes to subtle variations of your favorite fragrances, right? As a collector, I knew that I had to have it. Now, is there a noticeable difference in this one? Yes, I think there is. And I think the difference is about 30%. Now, those notes, that have been toned down is enough in that 30% difference to make a, a, a change that is noticeable enough, but also I wouldn't use the word improves the formula because I find the original to be a masterpiece, but it's enough to accomplish what the brand was setting out to do, which is to create a smoother version of the original. Now, if you look at the official note breakdown on Fragrantica, but also on the brand's official website, it doesn't list the note of oregano, which many people would argue is the strongest note in the original. But when you read the description and the narrative of this fragrance and what they've set out to do, and this is from their official website, it says that we have toned down, not removed, it says we have toned down the oregano note. So despite the fact that it's not listed in the note breakdown, it's still in the fragrance and when you smell it, it still has this herbal aromatic property to it. So 100% this note of oregano, it, it is still in the fragrance and my nose is picking up on it quite strongly. So you have this leather accord, you have the oregano, you have the rosemary, you have this green element as well as that agarwood smoke. And I know a lot of people, according to user votes online, a lot of people are saying that they get a lot of olibanum in this fragrance. Olibanum slash frankincense to me has a very specific smell that smells like a lemony pine sort of aroma. And when you think of fragrances like Full Incense by Montal, Cardinal by Healy, these are fragrances that truly smell like frankincense. I'm not necessarily getting that particular smell in this fragrance, but I am getting that smoky nuance that is found in the original. Now, in terms of this iris note, I think it comes and goes. It's definitely in there and I definitely pick up on it. And I wouldn't say that it makes the fragrance smell waxy or lipsticky in any way, but it does add this slightly creamy, smooth quality that sort of lingers throughout the entire composition. And I think it's a really nice added touch to this fragrance 
And like I mentioned earlier, I think the brand is 100% successful in conveying a lighter, smoother version of Interlude Man, but also something that still retains that unwashed quality in there. And by the way, the, the oils in this fragrance, it's still 25% concentration. Now, in terms of the violet that's used in here, I don't think it's a violet note that is really noticeable. If you think of fragrances like Fahrenheit by Dior, it kind of gives it like a leathery smell. If you think of fragrances like L'Homme Libre by Yves Saint Laurent, it almost gives it this sort of clean, soapy smell or even wood by D Square has a lot of violet as well. None of that is happening in this fragrance. What you're really getting is this slightly creamy yet smooth floral touch that sort of runs throughout the entire composition. And I also must uh, mention that it's not going to be as noticeable as when you spray the two side by side. Then you can see how much more aggressive, for lack of a better word, the original is in comparison to this one. And as a matter of fact, the several times that I have already worn this on my skin, I was able to detect the fact that this is much smoother. Now, I think another point to be made is that you are going to notice the differences so much more when you spray the two fragrances side by side and you actually juxtapose them to do a comparison. Because when I smelled this initially, like I said, it just smelled like interlude man to me. But when I sprayed the two side by side and I actually went back and forth, you will notice immediately just how I guess stronger, for lack of a better word, the original Interlude Man is, but I think it's unapologetic in its approach. And you definitely have a lot of this chaos that sort of makes up the olfactory narrative of the fragrance. And so this one is perhaps not as chaotic. This is once the dust has settled a little bit and once uh, some of this chaos or mayhem or havoc has started to dissipate and you're sort of experiencing the residual effects of this organized chaos. Ultimately, I think this is a beautiful fragrance. And it's also one of these segue fragrances that I can use for somebody who wants something that is niche quality, something that's truly artistic, super unique. Maybe they heard about Interlude Man, but you know, they're so used to wearing really sort of aquatic, citrusy, sort of tame fragrances, then I would say, you know what, as a way of sort of easing your way into it, why don't you try Black Iris first? And then you can see if you wanna take it another step up into um, interlude. Uh, man without the black iris designation to it. But ultimately, I think this is an awesome fragrance. I think that this will make a lot of fans of the brand really satisfied. I think perhaps one of the criticisms might be that it's not too different from the original Interlude Man, but I think it's different just enough that the brand was able to accomplish what they wanted to accomplish with this fragrance. And so I'm happy that I purchased this one. I'm super happy to have this in my collection. Let's go ahead and finish things off by taking a closer look at my my overall assessment. Now, first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, it's really hard to gauge or assess the uniqueness of a fragrance, especially when I am reviewing a flanker of something, right? So, I mean, it's similar enough to the original that it's not super unique, but at the same time, they set out to create a smoother version of the original Interlude Man, and they 100% accomplished that, while also still retaining that defining character from the original. In terms of the overall smell, it's one of my favorites, but if you guys know uh, Interlude Man, you know that it's not as uh, mass appealing or as commercial smelling, for lack of a better phrase, as like uh, Reflection Man or Dia Man or Silver Man or Beach Hut even for that matter. So this is one of the darker, one of the bolder releases from the brand, right up there with like Fate Man and Myths Man, if you're familiar with those fragrances. In terms of the longevity, superior. Um, in my opinion, the original interlude will give me 12 plus hours. It always did really, really well on my skin. And this one is right up there. So I feel like the performance has not been compromised at all. And it's not like you can say on account of the inclusion of some of these other notes that it's not going to last as long because to my knowledge, some of the base heavy, you know, some of the base notes in there, like the myrrh and the frankincense and the, ag the agarwood, the cedarwood, the sandalwood, 
those notes have not been played around with. They have not been manipulated or tinkered around with. So ultimately you are going to get a product that is still bass heavy the way that the original interlude is bass heavy. It's just that they played around with the concentration of the iris, the violet, the oregano, and the rosemary. And if you would like for me to do an actual comparison video between the two, because I know this fragrance is spoken about a lot of the community, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to shoot that video as well. In terms of the versatility, I do think it's compromised a little bit. I think this one is definitely a formal sort of a fragrance. Like I said, it cost me about $260. So if you're going to you know, wear this casually and you're gonna make it your everyday sort of a fragrance, you really need to have that sort of a budget that would allow for that frequency of wear. I think that this is the type of fragrance like I mentioned earlier where it's a little bit on the challenging side. I love the way that it smells. It's a beautiful fragrance. It's incredibly artistic and so different from everything else that's on the market but I think if you're looking for a more again for lack of a better phrase commercial smelling fragrance I think fragrances like Beach Hut Man and Reflection Man would fit that bill a little bit better but I personally love the way that it smells and it is I think my favorite fragrance right next to Reflection and Jubilation 25 and uh, Pierre Negrin I think did a fantastic job with this one and by the way he's also the perfumer for the original as well so you had the same person working on the flanker as uh, he also did on the original and I I think this one is perfectly unisex. I can see how somebody might argue that that smoky quality might make it a little bit more masculine. And I think that that's a fair point to be made. And I do think that something about this one uh, comes across as a bit mature. Uh, I certainly can't imagine this fragrance being worn by a high school student or anything like that. But once again, don't get offended. These are just recommendations. Where would you like? and uh, where what makes you happy. And the presentation on this one, I think is gorgeous. I like how it sort of took a darker approach, all the while utilizing a lighter colored floral ingredient. And you can see that the brush strokes are sort of, um, monochromatic in the sense that there isn't much else on this box as opposed to blue whereas if you look at the original interlude man uh, you see all these different colors on it and so there's enough of a differentiation where if you spot it in the store you'll know which is the original and which one is the black iris version my final verdict on this one is I love this fragrance. I'm so happy that I own it now. I'm, I'm gonna be wearing it a lot. I think uh, in terms of its release, it's a little out of season. I know it still has a lot of those weighty and heavy uh, aspects about it. So I would still be more inclined to wear this one perhaps in the fall. Um, I can see how the inclusion of the floral ingredients might convince somebody to wear it in the spring or when it's a little bit hotter out there. But I, I honestly think as long as you're in a climate controlled environment, honestly wear it whenever you want, whenever you crave it, whenever you're in the mood for it. But you know what? I might also be wearing a little bit of Silver Man now that I have the mini, unless I just want to save it for display purposes. Maybe I'll start collecting mini fragrances. But uh, all in all, I love this fragrance. I'm happy to have it. And I want to thank you at home for tuning into this video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I really do appreciate it and also if you are new to this channel and you took something of value from this video I would love it if you could support this channel by subscribing to it all you have to do is click that red button in the corner and this way whenever I do upload future fragrance related content it'll get delivered straight to your feed you never need to worry about missing any of my future uploads and please also make sure to enab enable notifications by clicking on the bell icon this way whenever I do upload a new video you'll get that notification sent straight to your phone thanks again for watching I love you all We'll see you next time. Bye.